putting stuff in my own words. Okay, and I'm yeah. usually like used to cutting cards. That's good. Anyone else? Yeah? Strategy. Strategy, that's difficult too. Anyone else? Come on, there's other problems. Thank you. Or are you on? Yeah, that's tough. Anyone else? Alright, well, we're going to try to cover some of the major problems uh, you will have with giving the 1AR, how to strategize before the 1AR, and what arguments and some, uh, you should go for, and some techniques that you can use in order to make your 1AR as more effective. So, uh, the biggest thing I have to say, if you take anything from this lecture, um, is that you need to flow. You cannot get away with not flowing. Like, I don't, I don't know how I can stress this even more. Um, a lot of people end up just, like, talking to their partner for the majority of the vlog and just kind of, like, zone out or something. I don't really know what, 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 I don't know what goes down, but you need to flow. Uh, flowing's difficult, I understand. No one's perfect at it. You get better over time. Um, but to really get better at the one AR, you need to do this. And we'll talk to, towards the end about the concept of shadow flowing, which some of you may have heard of before, but uh, I'll wait to the end because that's a little bit of it. Alright, so the first thing I should, I should say about giving the one AR is that you need to pick and choose. Uh, <coughs> some people said at the beginning that one of the biggest problems they have with the one AR is that they don't know what arguments they need to go for. This can be pretty difficult, and what you need to do is you need to, before the two, before the one AR, talk to your 2A about what, is, what you think, what they think is important. You don't need to just like go rogue and be like, I'm doing this, they can deal with my speech, they can deal with the 2A later on. You really need to work together as a partnership in order to get an effective strategy that you can extend on to the one AR. So first of all, picking and choosing has the ability to help you, you know, get uh, have the, the best strategy as possible to wear. But the other thing is that uh, what someone said was that they are having difficulty uh, covering the entire thing they block. Um, so, in our lab, we try to talk about how the 2AC is like a buffet. There's tons of different options you can have. You have like a link churn, uniqueness, internal link takeout, impact takeout, um, no links, all those sorts of things coming out of the 2AC, right? The 1AR, you need to take the time to choose and pick uh, what exactly you want to go for in the round. So, uh, what do you think are some ways that you can you can just uh, figure out how what you want to pick and choose? Come on. Yeah. What if the next block has the most coverage on? Uh, would you pick it or not pick it? Uh, I mean, you have to answer it. Okay, so you need to pay attention to what the next block really emphasizes. What else? Something that your neck did not, the neck did not really go down. Something they dropped. Yeah. Probably something that they could be most likely to win on. Like. Okay. Not, yeah, win. that's good. Something that if you don't answer the debate, or you don't you don't answer on the debate, or you if you don't you know really take out what they said they block, if you don't answer it, you don't lose the debate. There's one more. One more thing that you should always have in your one AR on a zip ad, on a cattle plan. Okay, well, yeah, you want to do that. What else? Comparison or why you're winning or something. Close. Impact health. Impact health is very close. Anderson? Warrants. Warrants. That's really important. And I was looking for it, but thanks for reminding me. Yeah, warrants are very, very important in the 1AR. What else? Warranty. Nope. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. So what you need is offense. She was really close when she was talking about impact calculus, which would be like weighing your case advantages against whatever they're going for. Uh, but you really, 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 really need have offense in your 1AR. You want to put your 2A in a position where they can win the debate on like an offensive argument from the 1AR. What's the difference between offense and defense? Yeah? Offense is something that people actually win around on, and defense is something that will not let you use. Okay, that's a good way to put it. Anyone else have a way to talk about it? Alright. This is a little quiz. I'm going to say an argument and tell me if it's offense or defense. No link. Defense. Link turn. Offense. No internal link. Defense. Impact turn. Offense. No impact. Alright. Seems like y'all got it. So, you want to make sure that you have a good buffet almost. You have a smaller 
the fave and the two eights. He has to be so the fave going into the one ER in order to have options for the two eights. The other thing is, um, in terms of picking and choosing, is having strategic options. And so sometimes you might only want to put off the front of the head in one ER. Uh, what, what might be an instance where you want to do that? All right, well, Wait, yeah. Can you, can you that? Oh, when would you only want to go for offense and on the 1AR and starting flow? When would you always want to go for offense? Let's say, um, okay, so you're, there's a diss ad that you have to answer in the 1AR. How would you decide to only go for offense or to go for offense and defense? Yes. Maybe if they, like, went a lot in depth about it, you could just impact on it. And it would be like, faster, I guess. Um, sure, maybe. Okay, yeah, that's, that's the reason why you want to go for a link turn, but why would you choose between going for a link turn versus a link turn and an impact defense card? Yes. Sorry, what? Yeah, you don't want to double turn. That's good. The main option is when, well, maybe if I put it this way, what happens if there's a diss ad and a counter plan? two scenarios in which there's a diss ad in the one AR in which you really should probably only go for offense. The first one is when you're, there's, a, there's a diss ad and counter plan, like let's say XO and politics. Let's say you're just like losing on the XO debate, right? Um, you don't have very much off offense, you don't know what you're going to do. Uh, <coughs> counter plan solves all the case. Um, what you can do on the politics diss ad is just is spend all of your time uh, going for the link turn on the politics to sad or the impact turn depending on what you have done the 2AC. This is a way to get some external <coughs> offense against the counter plan that you wouldn't have otherwise. Um, obviously you can still have this option if you went for defense on the diss ad as well, um, but 1 ER is very time pressured, right? You have 5 minutes, and 13 minutes, so you have to be happy, uh Ability to devote most of your time going to the impact turn and most of the time going to the link turn. Another option, let's say there was a politics diss ad, a space free diss ad, and case. Um, so, on case, they only have defense. So, and you're just like losing on, okay, hold on. I want to change space free diss ad to space nil diss ad. Right? Everyone was trying to say politics, space mill, case. Right? What if you're just like losing the space or the skip of this app? You just are just like getting like trashed. You're on the on the skip of this app. What could you do? All right, you can only go for the turns or impact turns on space mill. What if you only went for impact turns on space mill and a few arguments on skip up, What are they forced to do? No, they have to go for space mill. If you have straight turned a diss ad, the negative is now forced to go for that. There's not the for ability for them to kick out of their diss ad. So you might just like your, you know, maybe your YouTube cards and skips are just like real bad. It's like four months ago. The link turn, ooh, not so good. What you can do is only go for the space mill impact turns that you're really comfortable with, that you have a lot of evidence on, that you're just winning the video. So picking and choosing involves a lot of strategy. You have to decide when you want to do things like straight turning into a diss ad or conceding out of advantages. On that note, uh, when could you, uh, let's say there's an, you're in the 1ER and the blog did a very good job of like, putting a ton of defense and all your case advantages, um, what could you do to sit, like, give it up some time? Yeah, you could take out of an advantage. Uh, this is kind of tricky, and you want to make sure that there's still, you can kick out of it and make sure there's not an offensive claim on there, or that, that your defensive claim that you're conceding would not, uh, would not, would pick out the impact, sorry. So you have to make sure that the defensive claim that you're using to kick out of the advantage gets you out of any offense of an advantage as well. What does it mean to kick out of an advantage? Yeah. Just like, just like drop, but like, 
that you drop it, you don't go for it anymore, but what do you have to do in order to uh, kick out of it? Yeah. Exactly. You have to concede, you can't just be like, not going for the warming advantage anymore. You have to go for, your app can't solve warming, or warming's not real, or any of of those options in order to get out of the advantage. Um, and that's a good way to 1AR to really be able to uh, get a little bit of a time trade-off, especially after the 1AR. Before we move on, are there any other questions about picking and choosing? Or we'll talk about a little bit more later on about strategy in the 1AR. What yeah. you're saying is you have to voice it. You have to say, I'm conceding the, I'm conceding the, the, the warming advantage. Um, when you, so let's say you didn't want to go for the warming advantage, and the blog had an argument that warming was not real, and that, uh, let's say you're in the SPS, and SPS doesn't solve warming. So the 1AR would stand up, and you would say, you would put the warming advantage in the order, in the 1AR order, and you would say, warming advantage, not going for it, we'll concede, warming's not real, and uh, SPS isn't self-warming. That's all you got to do, uh, but you can't just be like, not going for warming. Or, does anyone know why? Because that's abusive for you to just say, that will not our advantage anymore. No, it's not <coughs> abusive. Because then they can <coughs> Yeah, if you had, if, exactly, if the neg had offense on the warming advantage, let's say the, um, let's say the neg block went for warming's not real, SPS has installed warming, and warming is good. Right? Those three arguments. Everyone clear? So the one error stands up says, we're not going for warming, and then moves on. They have not kicked out of the advantage. They have not conceded explicitly any of the negative arguments. Right? You just moved on. You have to explicitly tell the judge which arguments you are conceding to get out of the advantage. Because a negative could stand up and be like, you did not explain to me how you kick out of it, um, and then go for the offense. Okay? Does that make sense? Are there any questions about that? Okay, we'll move on, and we'll come back to uh, a little bit of strategy. Uh, the other thing I have to say about the 1AR is in terms of word economy. Like everyone said at the beginning, 1AR, everyone, it's very difficult. You have five minutes to answer 13 minutes. And a way, besides picking and choosing, that you can end up covering the debate is by <coughs> word economy. And this is a really difficult thing to just like teach or to just be able to do. Um, but it takes a lot of time. It takes lots of practice debates. Um, wait, first of all, does anyone know what I mean by word economy? Okay, word economy means just being efficient in the words that you're saying. Don't over, well, you know, you know, I don't want to say don't explain things, but be efficient when you're explaining things. You should have warrants, but at the same time, not over explain with too many, uh, you know, descriptive adjectives, too many extra words. Also, more economy would be getting rid of filler phrases. Like, um, uh, at the point that, you'll see that, in the world that, all of these are phrases that the debaters pick up, uh, that I, that I just used, uh, uh, debaters pick up these phrases and then use them a lot, especially when they emulate people who are older than them. Uh, and they are very difficult to get rid of. The only thing that I can offer as a point of, 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 point of advice is that you, there's two about pieces of advice. First of all, is you have someone else watch you give speeches. Have your partner watch you give speeches. Watch a lot of your coach, someone else on your team, anyone. Maybe someone that, uh, your lot leaders, other people in your lab, your roommate here. Watch, have them watch you give speeches. And every time you say something like, uh, or any of those other filler words that